everyone. Welcome back to 10 Minute I.O., where you'll find bite-sized information on all topics related to industrial organizational psychology. My name is Stephen Jong. I'm an I.O. psychologist or I.O. practitioner. We'll be talking about correlations today. I broke this into two parts, part one and part two. Part one, we'll, we'll be talking about what correlation is. In part two, I'll show you how to estimate or calculate correlations using Microsoft Excel. Correlation, in a nutshell, tells you the degree to which two or more variables are related. Uh, sometimes some people call it factors, uh, but I call it variables here. You may be wondering what variables are. A variable is anything that can change or take on a, a different value. Let me give you some examples here. Height, for example, is a variable because individuals can differ on um, how tall they are. Weight is also a variable because individuals, again, can vary in their weight. Intelligence is a variable that changes or differs across different individuals. Shyness is a variable, is a personality. We all have different levels of shyness or extroversion. On the other hand, pi, uh, the value, is not a variable because it's fixed. Speed of light, as far as I know, is fixed and doesn't change, so it's not a variable. Moon itself is not a variable. So you can see that, see it clearly the difference between a variable and um, those that are not uh, variables. In terms of the range of correlation coefficient, it goes from minus one to plus one. Minus one indicates a perfect negative correlation, meaning that as uh, the value for one variable increases, in this case x on the horizontal axis, the value for the other, the y variable, decreases. If correlation is close to zero, there is no linear correlation or relationship, meaning that as uh, x increases, you don't know whether y uh, increases or decreases. It's relatively random. On the right-hand side, a uh, correlation of 1 is a perfect positive correlation, meaning that for every unit of increase in x, uh, y will increase by a unit. So it's a perfect lockstep correlation, a positive uh, relationship. Correlation will range anywhere from minus 1 to plus 1, so you'll rarely find correlation of 1 or minus 1. Most correlations will, will be somewhere in between. It'll be plus 0.27, minus 0.45 or so. So somewhere in between these two ranges. Let me give you an example of positive correlation. Positive correlation is when two variables move in the same direction, either up or down. So both variables, when they move together in the same direction, as one goes up, the other goes up. As one goes down, the other goes down then we call that a positive correlation. If you think about temperature, as the outside temperature increases, as it gets hotter, we can expect ice cream sales to increase as well. So these two variables are increasing simultaneously. Height and weight, we also find that as tall people tend to weigh more. And so we would expect a positive correlation. And it's the same thing uh, when you look at height and weight. Uh, as height goes down, weight also goes down. So essentially, if there's a positive correlation, they are moving either up or down at the same time. Negative correlation is when two variables move in the opposite direction. And here's a visual example. As variable A goes up, variable B goes down. Here's an example of economic condition and crime rate. As the economy improves or increases, uh, the crime rate will tend to go down. So here's an example of where a, a variable A goes up, uh, variable B goes down. A person's patience. Uh, if a person has more patience, meaning patience increases uh, or is higher, we can expect uh, that, that person to experience less angry emotions. So var as variable A increases, the level of patience increases, then we would expect the angry emotions to decrease the, uh, the frequency of angry emotions. So this is an example of a negative correlation. Finally, we have zero correlation, where as variable A goes up or down, uh, nothing happens to variable B, the second variable. So a couple examples, hair color and intelligence, for example. Hair color, uh, you know, what color uh, one's hair 
um, one has has nothing to do with uh, intelligence, meaning that we can't really predict a person's level of intelligence based on their hair color. There are other predictors of intelligence, of course, but um, not hair color. Income and preference for vanilla ice cream, as uh, it's hard to predict whether a person will like vanilla ice cream or some other flavor based solely on their income. So in this, in these two examples indicate zero correlation or near zero correlation. Let's do a quick quiz here. Take a look at this chart, X and Y chart, and see if you can guess whether this is a positive, negative, uh, or zero correlation. If you predict a positive or negative, See if you can guess the strength of the correlation, how strong the relationship is. Look at the X and the Y. As X increases, you can see that Y decreases. So what that indicates is that it's a negative correlation. It's a strong one because you can see that the data points are fairly uh, condensed and they are headed down as X moves uh, to the right. Take a look at this one. It's just the opposite. You can see that x increases, y also increases. So now remember variable a and variable b. You can think of x as variable a, y as variable b. As in x increases, y increases as well. So we would expect a fairly strong positive correlation. And what about this one? You can see that x, x increases, y increases, but not as much as the second example that you see up there. So we would expect a positive but moderate positive correlation. And the last example here is, you should guess uh, by now what this is, it's near zero correlation because as x increases, we don't really know what happens to y. It's all over the place. Let's do a quick review. Quiz number two here. Uh, can you guess how the following variables are likely to be correlated, either positive, negative, or near zero? Here, you don't have to worry about the, the, the magnitude or the intensity. Education and income. We would expect that as one's education increases, income level also increases. Height and intelligence. We would expect that as people's uh, taller people, the question is, are taller people more intelligent? Probably not, so we would expect a zero correlation here, or near zero. Economic conditions and crime rate. We talked about this already. As economic conditions improve, crime rates should go down, indicating a negative correlation. Amount of time spent arguing and likelihood of divorce. As the argument incre or arguing, the frequency of arguments uh, increase, we would expect a likelihood of divorce to also increase, giving us a positive correlation weather measured by temperature and sales of skis. We would expect as the outside temperature increases, sales of skis should go down, right? So we would expect a negative correlation here. Last thing I want to cover here uh, is that there's one caveat with correlation, a uh, common phrase, correlation does not imply causation. This simply means that a statistically significant correlation doesn't necessar necessarily mean that one variable actually causes changes in, in the other variable. They can, but we can't assume that until we do an experimental study or some other uh, design in order to um, uh, find that out. So here's an example, smoking and coffee drinking. Uh, researchers find that there's a correlation, positive correlation of 0.13 between smoking and coffee drinking, meaning that smokers tend to be uh, coffee drinkers. But we can't really say that smoking causes people to drink uh, or coffee or, or people to drink coffee. Uh, vice versa, we can't assume that uh, coffee drinking will lead to uh, smoking. Same example here or similar one, ice cream consumption and crime there is a fairly strong positive correlation. This is just a guess, 0.56. Um, but we expect that as, uh, or a we would see a correlation, or it's commonly seen that as ice cream sales increase, crime rate also increase. But we can't say that eating ice cream 
will lead to higher crime rate or vice versa. Uh, there's really a third variable, which is outside temperature. When it's hot out, people tend to go outside. Uh, and when people are outside interacting with one another, there's more uh, opportunities for crime. Uh, and they also consume uh, higher uh, amounts of ice cream. That's it for now. Thank you for uh, watching. Please feel free to subscribe if you like the video and share the link with others. If you have any topic suggestions, uh, feel free to email me. Coming up next will be correlations part two, and I'll show you how to use Microsoft Excel to actually calculate or estimate correlations.